welcome to Wags and Whiskers, an informative program on WTVC brought to you by the Miami County Animal Shelter and the Troy Animal Hospital and Bird Clinic. My name is Marcia Doncaster. I'm the director of the Animal Shelter, and this is my co-host, Thor. Today's show is Choosing the Right Dog. What we're going to do is we're going to help you and your family decide what type of dog would best fit into your family and would meet your lifestyle. We're going to be meeting a young couple at the animal shelter here in just a little bit who's looking to adopt a dog. Some of the ways we're going to help them match the perfect dog uh, for their lifestyle is we are going to look at uh, what they do for a living. Are they home? Do they travel? Uh, are they active? Uh, that type of thing. If they get an active dog, then they're going to have to make sure that they keep that dog exercised both men mentally and physically. Uh, an active dog, if you get that and it doesn't get the proper exercise, it can lead to problems such as digging, chewing, barking, and can even turn into some aggression. If you're not so active, uh, you may want a more laid back sedate dog, uh, one that's going to just maybe go on leisurely walks, like to sit on your lap, watch TV, uh, and do just mild walking, kind of like Thor sometimes. Uh, they, they enjoy the lounging around the house and uh, mild play. The next thing you have to maybe look at, and we're going to help them look at, is do they want a puppy or do they want an adult? And each has their pros and cons. A puppy uh, of course, you're going to be able to train them right from the beginning. Uh, you're going to be able to teach them everything that they need right off the bat. But you're going to go through that chewing stage and they're going to have a lot of energy. If you choose to get an adult dog, a lot of times they may already be housebroken and they may know some of their own commands, but they also could be set in their own ways and be a little difficult to manage sometimes. So you have to weigh into that as to which way you'd like to go. Uh, it, sometimes you um, want to look at the training. Uh, every dog needs some type of training, even if it's basic obedience, sit, stay, down, come here. Uh, puppies, you're going to teach them that from the beginning. And uh, you'll be able to teach them everything they need to know. Uh, adult dogs may already have some of this training and they may be uh, adopted to you uh, already knowing how to sit, stay and everything. Some of your easier dogs that you'll be able to work with uh, that seem to be uh, a little bit more receptive to training are Labrador Retrievers, Golden Retrievers, uh, Border Collies, this type of dog. Some of your harder dogs that would be uh, more difficult and more challenging are going to be your hound dogs, your beagles, uh, bloodhounds. Uh, bulldogs are certainly stubborn, hence the name bulldog. And some of the terrier group can be a little stubborn too. So you have to look at how much time you're going to want to put into training. Also, there's local dog clubs that would be able to help you with some training and it's great for socializing your dog. If you have allergies, don't worry, there are still dogs out there that uh, will fit into that type of lifestyle. Uh, you can get dogs that don't shed or shed very little. Those would be your Airedales, your Poodles, uh, soft-coated Wheaton Terriers. These are all excellent dogs for people with allergies. So you uh, don't have to be afraid, you'd be able to be get something. Uh, if you do get a dog and you have small children, uh, first of all, always supervise, always, always supervise your children. Never leave your dog alone with uh, a dog um, and your children together. You just, you don't, never know uh, as well as the dog is trained. There's always the possibility of accidents, so be careful of that. Uh, trying to decide what type of dog for your children. If you get a super small dog and you have small children, you have to be careful because children love to pull ears, pull tails lay all over the dog. You get a small dog like a Chihuahua or a Poodle, they have a little attitude sometimes and they don't do real well with small children. If you get an overly large dog, uh, they're usually better with kids, but they're so big, you have to be careful that they're going to knock the children over. So again, supervise either way you go, however you want to do it. 
if you uh, have elderly parents or, or you're retired and you're looking for a dog for them, they're going to usually want a dog that's going to be more laid back, not quite so big, uh, because they could be knocked over too. And they want something that's going to be, that they could take a leisurely walk with. They can just take it down the street and back. They want something calm, maybe something that's just going to sit in their lap and watch TV with them. Those are usually your smaller dogs, your Shizus, your Poodles, Maltese, that type of dog. Um, the next thing would be, do you have a fence? If you do have a fenced-in yard, make sure that it's tall enough and secure enough for the dog. You don't want him to jump over the fence or crawl under the fence. So make sure that, just go around your fence and make sure that everything's okay with it. Uh, if you don't have a fence and you're thinking maybe I'll get one of those invisible fences, there's pros and cons to that. Uh, of course the pro is it makes your yard look bigger because you're not fencing it in, it's open, it looks nicer, uh, but then you have to think about uh, a couple of things. One of them is you got to make sure that the batteries in the collar that you put on the dog are always good. The number one reason that dogs get out of invisible fence is the batteries in their collar are dead. That's the number one reason we get dogs in the shelter that way. The other thing is uh, even though you have an invisible fence and it's keeping your dog in, it's not going to keep the other dogs or the other animals out. So any other dog, cat, anything, squirrels, anything's going to come in your yard. And if your dog is going to chase that or want to play with it and the other dog or cat takes off running, they're going to run right through that fence and they're not going to understand it. This, if your dog has the thing on, you're going to run through the fence, they're going to run through the fence, and now they're on the outside. And once they decide to come home, they're not going to be able to get back in because as they walk or trot towards that opening or towards the fence area, it's going to zap them so they're not going to be able to get back in. So there are pros and cons to that, to having an invisible fence. If you uh, don't have either, uh, just make sure that you walk your dog every day. Take him to the dog park when you can. Let them socialize, let them run loose. But definitely, definitely walk them every day. Inside the house, if he's going to be an indoor dog, uh, you might want to think about crate training. A crate is an excellent, easy way to house train, and it makes a safe place, a den-like atmosphere for the dog. But one thing you never, never, never want to do is make the crate a bad place. Never put them in there as punishment, because once you do that, then the dog is going to think it's a bad place, it's not going to want to go in there anymore, and you've ruin the chance of making it a nice place for the dog. It's going to make your, your work twice as hard. So just be careful. Use it as, as a, a good place. Throw treats in there for them. Once you've housebroken your dog or you've got him used to all of this, being in the house and not bothering anything, then you can eventually put the crate away. And the ultimate goal, I don't know for you, but for me, is to be able to let my dog have free roam of the entire house. Uh, when you do get a dog, of course, you have to think about what type of food do I feed them, okay? You're going to give them puppy food if you get a puppy right off the bat. Usually, till they're about a year old, it's up to your vet, but it's usually about a year. Then, of course, you're going to adjust the weight, or I'm sorry, adjust the food as the dog ages, different types of food, whether it's for senior dogs, large dogs, small dogs, weight management in case they just eat a little bit too much. So uh, you're going to have to do that. Uh, then you want to decide, do I want to go to the shelter and get a mixed breed dog? Do I want to go to a pet store? Do I want to go to a breeder? If you decide to go to a breeder or a pet store, check them out mm -hmm. carefully, very carefully. You want to make sure that you're going to get a healthy dog and one with no problems. If you come to the shelter, more than likely you're going to get a mixed breed dog, but mixed breed dogs are fantastic from the shelter because they usually get the best characteristics and the best traits from anything that they're mixed with. And they're usually very thankful that they're getting a new home. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to head over to the animal shelter. We're going to meet the prospective adopters and we're going to uh, see if we can help them out. Welcome back to the Miami County Animal Shelter. We're here with Philip and Jackie who are looking for uh, a dog to adopt. So we're going to be uh, finding out what kind of dog might fit their lifestyle and bring out a few and see what happens. Welcome guys. Hi. Good morning. Um, we're just going to get some information on uh, what's going to suit your lifestyle, how, you know, where do you live and things like that. Okay. Uh, what kind of dog are you looking for? Do you have a, uh, you know, like, are you active? Do you do much? What do you like to do? Uh, we stay pretty active. You know, we go outside when it's nice and everything. So obviously we take the dog with us whenever we can. Yeah. We wouldn't be cooped up 24 hours a day. Or right. Day. Right. You know. And you both work, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you do like a lot of running and biking and so you're out doing a lot of things like yep. that. So you kind of want a dog that's going to be active yeah. with mm -hmm. you. Yeah. You don't want one that's just going to lay around. And, mm -hmm. uh, and you do understand that, uh, you know, if you're not active uh, and you get an active dog that you, they're going to get all pent up. They need a lot of exercise sure. and everything. Okay, so we know that's kind of dog is you're looking for. Uh, do you live in a house or an apartment? Uh, we just have an apartment right now. An apartment, okay. And um, so you're going to be looking for something maybe, what, in like a, a medium large? I mean, do you have any preference, small uh, or large? Or? Something suitable for an apartment, so yeah. nothing too huge, I guess. Right. But. Um, right. Not against a bigger dog. Okay, okay. Um, and is there is there a yard or a fenced in area, or are you just? Um, no. Okay, so you would just be taking right. them out walking mm -hmm. on the leash and everything. Um, any any small children or uh, elderly people that live with you or anything like that that you would yeah. have to worry about? No. Because you know small. Uh, Small children usually, if they're around small dogs or anything like that, then they want to pull ears and pull tails right. and stuff. And um, uh, the large dogs can knock you over. So you're kind of looking, kind of mid to something because with the apartment, not a lot of indoor room. The tail will be going everywhere, yeah. knocking things over. Uh, <laughs> and of course, uh, you understand that dogs uh, are going to need. Uh, regular vet mm -hmm. and uh, there's going to be an expense there sure. so we want to make sure that your finances are going to be able to handle you know the heartworm test the the monthly flea treatments you know whatever is going to be necessary mm -hmm. so you're going to be able You've to plan that out yeah, yeah. okay good it's good in the, budget. in the budget that's always good um, whatever dog you get uh, it's probably going to need some sort of training. Mm -hmm. It just depends on, on if you get a puppy or you get an adult or whatever, because puppies, you know, you're going to go through the, the house breaking, through the chewing, through, sure. um, of course, they're going to be super, super active all the time. Whereas if you get one that's maybe a little bit older, they might be a little bit more laid back or at least already be housebroken or easier to housebreak set mm -hmm. in their ways. So we can look at uh, both of those. What we'll do is we're going to pull out a puppy, okay. uh, see what the, you know, see what you think of that. It's going to be about a mid-sized dog. Uh, then we have a larger dog. You take a look at that. And then we have one that's kind of in between. So we've got a little bit of everything okay. here okay. and you'll be able to, to check them all out and see, you know, if anything um, strikes your fancy or is going to meet your needs. Great. And uh, uh, we'll go with that. Uh, so what we can do is we'll walk through the kennel or we'll get a dog out, see what you think, and um, we'll see see if you guys click with any of them. How's that? Okay. Great. Okay. All right, great. Let's get started. Okay, so this is Gypsy. Mm -hmm. She's a six-month-old, just around six-month-old uh, pit bull mix. She was brought into the shelter as a stray. No. Uh, the problem with her is, she, you know, she has a special needs puppy okay. uh, because she is deaf. No. 
Uh, whether or not she's 100% deaf, we don't know. Uh, but if you're thinking about a puppy, some things you need to remember is, you know, oh. first of all, you're going to be teaching them right from the beginning, everything. They're going to want to put their mouths on everything, <laughs> do everything. They're not going to be housebroken. They're not going to know. Just like babies, you're going to have to teach them every single thing that, that they need to know. Um, once you get through all of that, you know, then, then they're going to be a good dog. Uh, with her being a pit bull, she's going to be active. Sure. As no. you can see, I mean, she wants to be right up in your face. <laughs> pit bulls can be very loving if they're raised right. Mm -hmm. So uh, you're going to have to spend a lot of time socializing her, taking her out around people, taking her out around other dogs. Okay. Uh, with also being a puppy, she's, you know, got all the puppy shots that she's going to have to go through. Um, and... Uh, uh, just like I said, keeping her social, basic training would do her wonders uh, because you're going to have to teach her with hand signals instead of verbal commands. But some of the trials and tribulations, like I said, with puppies, they're going to chew everything. They're going to want to see everything. You're going to have to almost baby proof your house. So, uh, but she's going to be active. She's yeah. probably going to get to be around, we're going to guess hey. around 30, 35 pounds, okay. maybe too heavy. Uh, so she is going to go through the teenage years, so to speak, yet. Yeah. But uh, I think in the long run, she'd probably make a pretty good dog. You yeah. just have to go slow with, mm -hmm. with puppies and make sure that you train them right. Okay. Crate training would do wonders for her. Sure. Uh, just never use the crate as a, as a bad tool. It's always a safe place for them. Okay. Lots of treats in there for them. But puppies are, <laughs> when they start losing those teeth, they're going to chew everything in the world that they can get their mouths on. Okay. So lots of toys, lots of okay. um, very hard toys for a, right. a big chewer, you know, the Nyla bones and the Kongs and everything like that. Okay. Keep them occupied and keep them from chewing on your furniture and your fingers. Um, so, uh, like I said, with her being uh, a part pit, you want to make sure that you do keep them socialized all okay. the time. Yeah. The more you can take them out and play with them, running would be great. Taking them out and getting them around people would be great. Okay. So, what do you think? Uh, things to consider, you know. Yeah. We'll, uh, See, see some other options, I guess. You don't want to jump at the first thing, obviously. So, the puppy may be a little too, uh, too much for an apartment. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, let's go grab another one, and uh, we'll see what the next option is. All right. All right. Our next dog. This is Hutch. Hutch. He's a five-year-old. Mixed breed, he's yeah. just one of those Heinz 57. Yeah. There again, came in as a stray. Uh, he is uh, large, as you can see. Yeah. Big boy. Big boy. He's already neutered. Okay. okay. So that's a, that's a plus for him. Yeah. Um, he's would definitely need some training, but he's loving. He's very active. He's very excited. Very excited. <laughs> Uh, we don't really know a lot about him since he did come in as a stray, but he would definitely be good on walks once he got some yeah. training. Uh, probably great running with you. Okay. Uh, a little large, so... Uh, <laughs> he is quite large. Depending on the size of your apartment or how often you could, could get him out right. and running. Yeah. Uh, once he relaxes and, and settles down, yeah. he probably would not be bad in an apartment. He um, seems to have some kind of training anyway. So. <laughs> yeah. Not not totally unruly, but like I said, you have to remember that with strays, when they come in, we don't know what their background is. Right. Saddle And we do just give them names mm -hmm. okay. when they come in unless an owner has released them, so we're not sure... Uh, you know what their names are. We give them names. It just it personalizes mm -hmm. them a little bit more sure. yeah. and helps out. He seems like a sweetheart. He would, uh, like I said, he would be a good running buddy, a good biking buddy yeah. with you. So, what do you think about him? Uh, he's definitely the other end of the spectrum. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, um, but. Yeah, we can see 
uh, if a big dog would fit our needs more than a little one, or if you have any other, do you have any kind of middle of the road? We have, yeah, I have one that we bring in just kind of yeah. a little bit in between. Okay. We just have a one bedroom, so I'm not yeah. sure if he right. would uh, benefit from right. living in such yeah, a small he's space. A, he's a big boy, but need a lot of room to run. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, we have, like I said, we always get new dogs in. Uh, I have another one here for you to look at, and uh, we'll see how that works out. Okay. Okay, so here's another choice for you. This is Matilda. Hi, Matilda. Matilda is right around eight years old. Okay. Female. Uh, we're not sure if she's spayed or not. That would be something that the doctor could check out for you. Okay. Uh, part of the adoption is uh, a $30 off coupon towards having them fixed, which okay. of course is mandatory. Mm -hmm. But she's about eight. She came in as a stray. She still has a lot of spunk in her step, so she'd be able to, to do some walking and running with you. Uh, the good thing about Matilda is she does have some training. Can you shake? Good girl. Can you sit up? Oh, yes, yeah, a good girl. So somebody has worked with her. Uh, we believe she is housebroken already. Um, and she she loves loves to just love on you, sit up, she jumps up on the couch with you. Uh, probably not quite as active if you did a lot of running. She'd probably prefer walking to, to runs and things. But uh, she, like I said, you can have your... You give you know takes and gives and yeah. stuff because she's already housebroken and and uh, has, knows the basics. She walks on a leash very well. Um, with her coat being a little bit longer than the others, there's going to be a little bit more care to that. You're going to have to brush more often, groom a little bit. Uh, if you take her out through the woods, she's going to get burrs. <laughs> so you're going to be picking burrs. And when she came to us, she had a lot of burrs. Mm. Uh, Floppy-eared dogs sometimes get ear infections. She does have an ear infection right now that we are treating. So that's something that you have to look out for with dogs with floppy ears because all that moisture stays in there. And a lot of times then you're going to get some infection if you don't clean them out. Uh, other than that, she's she's good to go. She's ready for adoption. And uh, like I said, she's already partially trained. She's about that middle of the road size. She's not going to get any bigger. But the trade-off is, like I said, she's probably around eight years old. So... You know, what do you guys think of her? She's mm -hmm. great. Yeah, like she's trained. There's uh, you know, some pros and cons to each one that we saw. Right. So uh, go home and take some measurements, maybe. And right. And do some thinking what, and decide. Yeah. Right. And you know, if if there's uh, you know, if, if none of these exactly fit with what you're looking for, you can always check the website. Uh, we do get dogs in all the time, so you can check our website. You can check the website at WTVC, and they'll be able to, uh, they'll have the dogs up there too. And uh, I'm sure at some point we can we can match you guys up with, with what you need. Great, thank you. All right, thank you for stopping by. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay, welcome back. Although Phil and Jackie didn't find a dog today, they now at least have an idea of what they're going to be looking for um, and what kind of dog that they're going to want. Whatever you do, whatever you decide on, just make sure that you get your dog spay or neutered. It's so much better for the dog and with so many dogs in the shelter, wouldn't you rather just save a life? So it doesn't matter if it's large, small, young, old, long hair, short hair. Make sure you consider all of these things before you decide. Don't make a snap decision and just run out and buy a dog because you feel like getting one. This is going to be a long time commitment. It's going to be a lot of time, a lot of money, and you want to make sure that you make the right choice the first time. It's going to be better for you, your family, and it's going to put less stress on the pet. And whatever you do, don't forget to check our website or WOTVC's website to make sure that you look for our adoptable dogs. 
I hope this program has been helpful and I hope you keep watching. We want to thank you today for watching. Stay tuned for future programs and whatever you do, remember, don't pity a shelter dog. Adopt one. Isn't that right, Thor? Come here, buddy. Are you good? Yes? Yes? Okay, give me five on it. Yeah, that's been a good boy. Thank you, and we'll see you next time on Wags and Whiskers.